Hundreds of people paid their respects to our fallen soldiers at a Memorial Day service in Wausau. The service was held at Restlawn Memorial Park. Local veterans spoke of the price war has had on all of us. All American soldiers who fought and are fighting for our freedom. But there's a group of Vietnam War veterans living in America who are all but forgotten. John DeRivers gives us an inside look at the secret war and those who fought and died in it. Now Shu Zhang grew up in Laos, a small country in Southeast Asia. Today he lives with his family in Warsaw, and there's a reason he and thousands of Hmong people like him came to America. This picture of Viet American CIA, this is me. We learned for how to use the grenade and how to use the bomb. In the early 1960s, U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War was escalating. And in Laos, a neutral country, a communist organization known as the Pate Lao threatened to seize control. If the communists took over in Laos, the American government feared they could take over the entire region. President John F. Kennedy decided the U.S. needed a military presence in Laos to fight the Pate Lao. But because it was a neutral country, it would be considered an act of war if he sent U.S. troops in. The Hmong people don't like the uh, communist way. Everybody like freedom. They don't want the government to control. The Hmong people living in the mountains of Laos were against the Pate Lao, but had no weapons to fight them. That's where the CIA comes in. With American weapons and training, the Hmong people were now equipped to fight the communists and help the U.S. at the same time. This became known as the Secret War. The life that they're fighting in the war, that is not easy. It's very hard for uh, the soldier. And the enemy can surround you. You think, uh, I don't have a chance to live. Maybe I'm going to die or I'm going to die. Zhang was a lieutenant in the Royal Lao Army led by Hmong General Vang Pao. The CIA positioned the troops to block the communists from using the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the main military supply route that ran from north to south Vietnam. Zhang and nearly 40,000 Hmong soldiers put their lives at risk on the front lines of battle. Every day, men were dying. My father, my brother, and my uncle passed away in that time. As in they fight each other, they kill. And I lost I lost my family member and my friend. Now Shua tells me he saw one of his closest friends get killed right in front of him on the front lines. He says he doesn't know how or why he survived, but tells me he was one of the lucky ones, along with another close friend. Zheng Zhang hosts a Hmong language radio show in Warsaw. He was also a lieutenant in the Lao army. I carry the weapon and I uh, stay in the front line so we can uh, fight back and forth. He joined the army at 14 years old and like now Shua, he lost many friends and family members in battle. It's something he thinks about often. I do have a nightmare I think about that and something still on my mind. Uh, Sometimes I still uh, have the dream that we still fought the uh, communists and sometimes they are uh, be uh, 52, come over our heads and draw the bomb so we have to escape. In 1975, the United States pulled out of Vietnam, and soon the Pate Lao began killing Hmong men, women, and children because they helped the U.S. The Hmong people had to flee their country or be killed. Running for their lives, thousands of them crossed the Mekong River into Thailand. I saw the, uh, the lights and the car come in and no, we know that we reached Thailand, so we will be safe because Thailand will be uh, democracy and freedom. Now without a home, the Hmong people lived in refugee camps in Thailand until, in the late 1970s, the U.S. military brought many of them to America because they fought and died for America in the secret war. Most people, they did not know us, but we uh, fight uh, for the United States and we uh, try to.